Hello everybody and welcome to today's episode of Fishing with Joe. I'm in beautiful John Bryan Park near Yellow Springs today. And today I'm going to do a little bit of a demonstration for you. Um, I've got quite a few requests on the show and, uh, and those requests have involved um, things that I do to get my tackle ready in order to go out there and catch fish. And just a few days ago, um, I did a guide trip and I'm going to show you a picture from that guide trip right now. We had a pretty good time out on that trip, but on that trip, um, we had a little bit of a little bit of a problem with some of the reels. Um, the client had uh, put line on his own reels. They were spinning reels. And when he took them out and started to cast them, they started to tangle up quite a bit. And I said, wow, you know, this, this can give me an opportunity to, uh, this is an idea. It can give me an opportunity to show some folks just how to put line on a spinning reel, or at least how I do it. So uh, right here, I have a spinning reel and I'm going to show you how to put some, put some line on it. Um, this spinning reel, it was spooled up with eight pound test line. After about every four trips, I like to take the line off of the reel. I just think that monofilament line gets weak after about four trips, especially eight pound line. So I like to take it off. So I'm going to do the same exact thing that you would do at home. You don't need any special equipment. Uh, you just take that line and uh, take all take your hook off and just start pulling it off the reel so that's what I'm gonna do right now pull all that line off the reel or at least most of the line off the reel I always like to leave a little backing and what the backing does is I usually put about 25 yards of backing on that reel and that way I don't use as much line so that when I replace that line every fourth trip or so, instead of putting on the whole 20, 125 yards of line, I may only have to put 100 yards of line on. And then I just save a little bit of line, save a little bit of money that way. So I'm going to start taking this line off and go all the way down to that backing that I have on there. Need bait and tackle for your next fishing trip? Check out r r Bait and Tackle. Believe me when I say they're the best in the Buckeye State. Open seven days a week, all summer long. Now let's get back to the action. Okay, now I've got most of the line off of the reel down to the point where I've got about 25 yards of line on this reel. And I'm gonna show you a, gonna show you a special little trick, how I back these reels. There's a special knot that I use and it's called a blood knot. And what the blood knot does is it allows me to take the new line and then tie it into the old line. It's going to be a small knot that's going to be on the reel, but once you reel it down on the spinning reel, it'll lay flat. And once it lays flat and you have it far enough down on the reel, you don't even know that it's there. You'll fish with that reel and fish with it and fish with it, never even know that knot is there. And in most freshwater uh, fishing situations, you never go down to that point on the reel. If the fish runs you, runs 100 yards of line off the reel and you've got 125 yards of line on there, you're just about gonna lose that fish anyway. Um, most of the time in most of my freshwater fishing, I rarely have more than about 40, about 40 yards of line off the reel at any time. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do this knot and give you a good, good close up. All right, everyone at home, here we go. Here's your close up. Now this is the old line. That's my backing. And this is the new line that I'll be putting on. And here is how I tie this knot. And you, you don't always get this knot correct the first time. A lot of times you have to do it two or three or four times in order to get it right. But it's worth doing it because in the long run, it's going to save you a whole lot of money. All right. In my right hand, I've got the new line. In my left hand, I've got the old line. And I want to cross them up. What I want to do is I want to twist them up. But when I twist them, 
together, I'm doing. I'm going to do something special. I'm going to take my one of my fingers, my index finger, and I am going to hold it in between those lines. So I've got a loop. So I'm putting my finger right there in that loop, and I'm going to wrap it around one, two, three times. I want to get it around approximately three times. All right, maybe I went around one extra time, but that's all right. Then I'm going to take my other finger and I'm going to hold that knot. I want to, or hold that place open. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to run that line around, wrap it around. That's one, that's two, and that's three. Should be three. Okay, close enough. And you notice there I used my teeth. In order to tie this knot, you, need, you really need an extra set of hands. But you can use your teeth in place of those. All right, now, here's what's important. The one in my left hand, which is the old line, the backing, I wanna, I'm hold, still holding this knot right here. I'm still holding this open. And the reason I'm holding it open is because I wanna take this line and I want to stick it back through that hole. I want it to come toward me when I do this one. I want it to come toward me. It's going to open up another hole right here. And I'm going to take that line, the end of it, and pull it back through. Now, this, this one in this hand came toward me. Now I'm finding that same exact hole. Got the end of the line here this one I want it to go away from me so there is my hole right there I want to let it get away and I'm through going away from me and coming back through this hole now this is important right here you need to take this knot and you need to wet it and you can kind of put it in your mouth to wet that knot down and when you wet that knot down, then grab both of those tag ends. You want to grab both of those tag ends and you want to pull the new line and the old line against each other. And you want to work these tag ends down. If you don't work them down, they'll begin to slide against a slide away from each other. And you don't want them to slide away from each other because if they slide away from each other then that's it that knot is not going to cinch in against itself all right you want to pull it pull it tight and when you pull it tight that's it should cinch both sides of the knot should cinch right down against each other all right there we go want to make sure you pull it tight and you want that knot to be small because it's going to be on that reel and you don't want it to be bulky. All right, there we go. Perfect knot. And I'm going to take the tag ends and I'm going to take a little pair of scissors right here and I'm going to clip the tag ends off so I can make this knot nice and neat. All right. And here we go. All right. There we go. Nice and neat little knot. Okay. And now that I have that knot, I've got my new line joined to my old line. I can use that old line for backing and I can just crank the new line right on. Okay. Let's do that. Have you ever wanted to go fishing with Joe? Well, here's your chance. Every year, Joe books a limited number of guided trips. You'll get a chance to fish with Joe himself and see what it takes to put on Ohio's most popular online fishing show. Trips are booking up fast, so you better hurry. Now let's get back to the action. All right, folks at home. Now here's the next part of what I'm gonna do. Here's the next little trick that I use. And I learned this trick in the old bait and tackle shop that my family used to run. I would have to put line on quite a few 
reels. And this is just one of the things that I used or I learned to use in order to get that line on that spinning reel nice and tight. I get myself a few paper towels. I want the thick absorbent paper towels when I do this. Those just seem to work a little bit better. And a little bit of water. And what I'll do is I'll just take and just barely put a little bit of water on this paper towel, just a little bit. I don't want a lot on it, just a little bit of water. All right, that's enough. And then what I'll do is I've got my line, I've got my spool of line setting here, and I there is kind of a big discrepancy as to how you put the line on. You want the line, you know, you want to want the line coming off the spool the same way it's going on the spool. And I always I haven't always been a big advocate of that. It, for me, it really hasn't hurt me a whole lot either way because I kind of use this trick to help compensate for that. Now, I want to make sure that I don't see any twist coming off of the reel. Line twists are always bad. If you see line twist, spin that spool over and that way you can get those line twists out. But what I'm going to do is just set this spool down and I'm going to grab my spinning reel and you've already seen me tie the knot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reel down past that knot and I want to hold that line and get that knot nice and tight on that reel. All right, now I'm going to take and I'm going to open up this paper towel and I'm going to put it right around this line right here. I want that line running through it and then I'm going to fold it over. And the reason I do that and I hold it against the rod like that and the reason I do that and I'll tighten down the drag on the reel. I'm doing that so I can get that line nice and tight on the reel. But there's another thing that it does for me as well. Those curly cues that are coming up, that can come off of that spool, the spool of line and get onto my reel spool, when I'm holding this nice and tight, guess what happens? When those curly cues come through this, through this wet towel right here, it won't let them through. It won't let them through and I can see them start to build up coming off the spool of line. So now that I'm holding it tight, I'm just going to start cranking on this reel handle and I'm going to crank this line on. It's going on nice and smooth. And again, holding this paper towel against the rod with the line running through it and that keeps it nice and tight. All right, now I've got to about where I want to stop. And for me, that's about an eighth of an inch below the lip, the front lip of the spool right here. That's about where I want that line to be. If it's light line and I've got to cast a long way, what I'll do is I'll put just a little bit more on. The more line you put on, the more likely it is to just spring off of the spool and to tangle on you, all right? So general rule of thumb is about an eighth of an inch. If it's heavier line, make that distance a little bit more. If it's lighter line, you can get away with a little less. But if you overfill it, if you overfill it that's one of the big things that's going to cause you that's going to cause it to kind of spring off of the reel and give you problems when you're out there on the water. So what I'm going to do now, just going to cut it off. And there we go. All right. And I'm going to take this line right here and I'm going to clip it. And uh, then it'll be ready to go when I'm out on the water and then I can just tie my lure on and I'm ready to go. All right. Hey, thanks for watching the show. 
I hope this has been informative for you and I hope it helps you a little bit on the water. It's just a couple of little things that I do um, using the towel and also backing the reel off, showing you how to tie the knot. That can help, that, those things can just help you out a little bit on the water, help you save a little bit of money, um, uh, help you get around a little bit of the frustration of getting all of those tangles, and ultimately help you catch more fish at the end of the day. Thank you for watching the show, and uh, see you again next time. Thank you for watching today's episode of Fishing with Joe. We work hard to produce the best fishing show the Buckeye State has ever seen. We're glad you enjoyed the show. Be sure to check out our show sponsors and tell them that Joe sent you. Goodbye and great fishing. Fishing with Joe is proudly brought to you in part by R&R Bait and Tackle. The best bait and tackle service in the Buckeye State. Check out my favorite web service, EasyWeb. It's professional, it's affordable, changes anytime you want. Call toll free 1 877 My Easy Web or sign on to 1 877 My Easy Web.com. Okay, Joe, we have your motor running uh, just like it's supposed to, and uh, you're ready to go back on the water again. Larry, that, that didn't take any time at all. You got me fixed up right away. I mean, I, I'm so excited. I broke down on the water and I thought it was over with, but, but you got me running in next to no time. Uh, thank you so much. I see the phone is ringing. Oh, yeah. That's another that's person. That's another person that wants their motor fixed. Hopefully it is. Thank you, Joe. I'm glad we could take care of it so soon. It's all been right. a pleasure working with you. Thank you. Thank you so much.